Greetings, programs. My name is Wretch, and I'd like to welcome you to the Dresden Files Cooperative Card Game. Now, I'm a huge fan of the Dresden Files, guys. The book series about the professional wizard named Harry Dresden and all of his misadventures in the city of Chicago. I've read all the way up to the most recent release, Skin Game, and waiting very patiently for the next release, Peace Talks. And I actually own a physical copy of this card game, but due to real life, I haven't really had the time to play it. So when I saw on Steam that there was a digital version, I figured, well, why not? We can go ahead and check it out. Now, I actually had to watch a video to learn how to play the game, so I have a basic understanding of it. Unfortunately, there is no in-game tutorial here. There is a guide, so you can go ahead and check this stuff out. But um, I actually saw some misspellings here on the tutorial, which is not really a good sign. But it's okay, we can go ahead and ignore that for right now. Though an in-game tutorial would be very nice. So we have different game types here. We've got Solitaire, which is what we're going to be playing, and the rest are multiplayer options. It's a multiplayer game, so it makes sense. We have a choice between three difficulties, which is Apprentice, Wizard, and Merlin. And I think we're gonna go ahead and go with Wizard. Now we have the book decks. The game right now in its base form, I don't have any of the DLC, um, has five, technically six, um, decks based on the books in the series. So the adversaries and the challenges we're going to be facing in the game is based off each book. So we have Stormfront, Full Moon, Grave Peril, Summer Night, and Death Masks. Everything else is um, locked, and apparently this goes all the way up to Turncoat. There's still some other ones here, um, books in the series. And we also have side jobs, which is basically just taking random stuff from all of these and just throwing them in. So that should be fun. But we're going to go with Stormfront. It was the first book in the series. It's how everyone got introduced to uh, Mr. Dresden. And we always have Harry with us. Now, normally how this runs in multiplayer is that each person um, playing has a deck based on a character from the series. So since we're going to be playing Solitaire, we're going to have three random characters join us, and we're actually going to be playing all of the characters. So right now, the game has Karen Murphy, Michael Carpenter, Susan Rodriguez, and Billy and Georgia. I'll kind of sum up if you guys haven't read the series. Karen Murphy is a really no-nonsense cop. Michael Carpenter is a modern-day knight. He actually ha He's a knight of the cross. He has a sword that has one of the nails from Christ's crucifixion in it, and he's awesome. Susan Rodriguez, who's a no-nonsense reporter, and Billy and Georgia, who are werewolves. And I don't really want to go into any more than that. So we have variants. Those are locked by DLC. All of the characters and the rest of the books are currently locked by DLC. Not really too fond about that, but it's okay. Let's go ahead and go onward. Time to prepare. Now's a great time to examine the table and form a plan of attack. Select a character portrait to view their cards. When you're ready to begin, simply click the large flashing arrow button in the lower right of the side of the screen. So, here is the game board. Now, the entire purpose of this game is to have more completed cases than there are foes remaining on the board. So the foes here are represented in red. The cases we need to solve are represented in green. Alright? So, um, we have foes remaining four and we have zero cases solved. And here is the obstacles we have to go over, and here's our deck right now for our character, for Harry right now. We have red, which are attack cards, investigate cards, which are green, and I have a take advantage card, which is purple. Now, this is a lot to take in, guys, but just kind of bear with me. So, um, actually, this doesn't do a good job of explaining the ranges. Ranges start like here. Think about the cards going from left to right. Range of 1, range of 2, range of 3, range of 4, range of 5, range of 6. So on these cards right here, um, let's see if we can check out something a little bit closer. Let's look at Michael's deck. There we go. Perfect. We have most of these um, cards have a range that you can see right here. So a range of 1 would only be attacking or affecting the cards on the first row and so on and so forth. Now, for Investigate cards, we have Fate. Now, Fate is essentially mana in this game. We start out with 8. We have 5 used. Um, easier games, we have the full 13 um, pieces of Fate. What we have to do is make sure that we don't go over um, 
our we don't spend more fate than we actually have because that'll actually force a showdown and end the game. So going back to Michael here, the attack cards, that's how many hits um, it can inflict onto an enemy. For investigate, that's how many clues um, you can give toward an investigation card. Investigation has this is how many clues it's needed to actually get defeated. And let's see here. Now, this little white box that you see right here, that's actually a fate die. And I'm not a big fan of the fate die system myself, but that's kind of what we have to go with here. Um, the dies have are either blank, have a negative symbol, or a positive symbol, and those can add or take away from successes. So if I rolled a negative here on that one die, I would only it would only cost two fate, or cost more. It, it kind of depends, and it's also in terms of how effective the card can be sometimes. Oh, we also have Overcome. Um, this, this takes uh, care of obstacle cards. Obstacle cards are represented by this, the kind of warning symbol, and these are kind of debuffs that will stay in the game until we take care of them. For example, we have Morgan is Watching. It's an obstacle from Stormfront. Until this obstacle is overcome, all attacks cost plus one fate. And uh, Three-Eyed Drug War... Actually... Yeah, that works. Until the obstacle is overcome. Now, an interesting thing about this in terms of the cards... Is that is also the fate cost, is how much it costs, but also how much fate that we can get from sacking, sacrificing it. We can sacrifice cards for fate um, to get a little bit more fuel in the tank for maybe cards that have more immediate effect. So for a two range, Michael for two fate, potentially three or one, can overcome one obstacle because he's got the power of God on his side. He can take advantage of stuff. It's a lot to take in, but once you kind of get your uh, brain pan around it, it's pretty good. Now, each character here has a stunt, a stunt that can only be used once per game. For Harry, it's as your turn, flip this card over to add four hits to any one foe that will be defeated by one to four hits. So if we have an enemy close to dying, Harry can essentially coup de gras, which is awesome. Um, for Michael, as your turn, flip this card over to add three hits to any one legal foe that has no hits on it. Then move that card to the farthest range in its row. So he essentially has a knockback, do three hits and just get away. And we have Billy and Georgia here, and their, alf their um, alpha pack attack is their stunt. As your turn, flip this card over to add one hit to all foes that have at least one hit. So they have an AoE. Pretty cool stuff. So uh, let's go ahead and just jump in this and see what happens. Who should go first? Let's go ahead and have Harry go first. There's a lot more tactics to the game, but it's this is kind of much like Harry Dresden. We're going to have to jump headfirst into this and see what happens. Also, um, you see these like letters right here. This means that some of these are linked. For example, Victor is missing. If we go ahead and complete that, when solved, add three clues to who is the Shadow Man, which is over here. Until solved, cannot add hits to Kaljazak, the Toad Demon. And Kalajak, the Toad Demon's right here, so we can't even affect this guy until we beat that, uh, beat that case. So lots of, lots of intertwining kind of stuff we have to deal with. So with Harry, the first thing that we have is we have a take advantage card, and the advantage here is beer at max, the bar. When taken, active player draws one card and distributes two draws among other players. So. Let us go ahead and we can try to roll fate. So that's an optional thing for us. We can see maybe if it'll take three, maybe it'll take one. Let's go ahead and find out. And whoops, I did not read the Morgan card. Well, actually, Harry Dresden used Rifletum to take beer at max for only one. That actually helped us out. There are two cards to distribute. Select one to two players to receive them. We'll hand one card off to each of these guys. There we go. 
and that was his his action. You have a choice between certain things. You can play your stunt, you can play a card, you can sack a card for fate, or you can do nothing. So we have some uh, we have some firepower here. I do want to get rid of that. Actually, helped us out the three eyed drug war. Until this obstacle is overcome, one blank fate die becomes a negative on all die ro rolls. And we were actually looking for a negative die roll at that point. Um, the one that we do need to take care of, if possible, is Morgan is watching. Um, two with a star for Fist of God. No valid targets. No valid targets, but we need to overcome those things for sure. So let's go ahead and banish the darkness. It's an investigate card. Because we don't have any more advantages. Actually, yeah. Let's deal with that. Oh, no, we do have a speed potion. Ew. So for two fate, or four fate, this has, we can take advantage here. But with Michael's card, it says take one advantage... Add two clues to any cases and two hits to any foes adjacent to the target advantage. But this guy can't receive hits until who is the Shadow Man is solved, but we also would get two clues um, put on the ritual double murder. The speed potion advantage is when taken, active players draw one card that immediately takes another turn. You may move Kaljazak to the furthest range. Ooh, I like that. So... Let's go ahead and take this advantage. Move Kaljazak, the Toad Demon, to the furthest range. Yes, please. So we don't have to deal with him. And Michael gets a free turn. Now, due to the fact that we have a blessing of Overcome, we're going to go ahead and spend... Actually, because of the Three-Eyed Drug War, we will roll... So it cost us less fate to use. And Morgan is watching is gone. So now all attacks cost what they're supposed to. Doing good. Now we got Billy in Georgia. We only have two fate um, currently. So what we're going to probably have to do is... Actually don't mind that three-eyed drug war... This option actually will sack our fate. So, Billy and Georgia discard strength and numbers for three fate. Now, we have a natural talent. Oh, I forgot about that. Um, these characters also have a natural talent. When you discard for fate points with Harry, you may move one obstacle or advantage card forward or backward one space in either row. So, we get to kind of reposition stuff, which is cool. Um, we have five... Um, we've got Pyro Fuego, which is Harry's attack. It adds two hits to all foes in one row, which is um, pretty awesome. We do need to go ahead and start knocking out cases, though. So let's go ahead and spend Consult with Bob. Hmm... Or should we hit everything in a row? Let's go ahead and do that because all of our end foes are right here. We kind of have to balance whether we want to take out enemies or solve cases. So we'll spend four fate for Pyro Fuego. And attacks all three of these guys for two. Neat. Michael. What do you got, buddy? And since we don't have any more advantages on the board, we can go ahead and just... Sack that. Faith protects. Michael's one of my favorite characters. You may flip this card over... Ooh, I didn't see what just happened there. Probably should have checked that out. Um, Now we have three fate to play around with. Let's do... Hmm. Let's go ahead and sack the flanking attack. He had one hit, which we do. We're taking out the Shadow Man, which is awesome. Now we have five. Add two clues to all cases in one row. 
Let's do... Ooh, we got a choice here. Let's try here. Because until solved, adds three clues, and then until this is solved, we can't actually touch the toad demon. Consult with Bob. Thank you, Bob. Now, I want to see what was his ability. You may flip this card over to give the card you play this turn plus two range. Start the game with this side face down. Knight of the Holy Cross. Okay. Gotcha. Any legal foe that has no hits to it. Well, we have hits to everything right now. So, let's go... Let's get rid of Fist of God. That gives us five fate. It's a lot of management, as you guys can see. It can be very interesting. So we have five fate here. Investigate may only be used if it will not solve the target case. That gives us four clues. Um, let's go ahead and do this one. That's six. It's almost done. One fate now. We will discard our base attack. May trigger a showdown. Let's not do that. Because if we roll badly, which we would because of the three-eyed drug war, we would have negative fate and instantly trigger the end of the game. So, no. Move one obstacle or advantage card. Can we move it? There we go. I wanted to do that because now we can spend one fate with Michael and get rid of the three-eyed drug war. Now we just have investigation and um, monsters to kill. So we'll take care of Lupine Leap. And I probably could do an AoE attack with all of these guys. Two, let's do private investigator, investigate. There's a range of three. Now, it actually does cost a fate point to pass your turn, so we want to make sure that we do not do that. No target for the talent. That's okay. Now then, we can... Oh man, all of Michael's stuff is investigate like right off the bat. Let's do... Discard Divine Revelation for five. There we go. Now we got some stuff to work with. Let's try using a talent. Flip this card to add one hit to all foes that have at least one hit. And that would actually hit everyone except for... Um, Kalajak. I'm alright with this. Get the pack of werewolves. Excellent. I like it. Now we can do four hits here, potentially, to something. Maybe less. Um, we do need to... This has a range of one. Huh. Oh, we can Blasting Rod. Wait a minute. Yes. We will use the st and we'll take care of Marcone's goons. Gentleman Johnny Marcone, who's one of my favorite characters in the book. Down he goes. So there's three foes remaining, which means that we need to take care of some investigation here. Too sweet. So let's use the Knight of the Holy Cross. That gives a card a plus two range. Will uh, trigger automatically. Um. Dismiss or hmm, I don't know. We'll trigger if you want to do it. Interesting. Ah, so it does just add to the basic. So, three clues. We'll go ahead and do that. That's a cool ability. 
Michael Carpenter uses Banish the Darkness to investigate Victor is missing for three. And that just added three to uh, who is the Shadow Man. Not too shabby, guys. Now, we can... Ooh, five fate for four to three clues with a two range. That's definitely worth it. I think we can pull it off. Yeah. Let's see. Five clues. Awesome. Now, Harry... We've got three foes remaining and two cases solved. Um, unfortunately... I'm not sure how this... This is actually a tough game, by the way, guys. If you couldn't already see. We've got some fate... We have a choice here whether we really want to focus on... Four to five hits. And we don't actually have enough. Let's... What cards do does everyone else have? Sanctified Strike for three. Hmm. Let's go ahead and this may cost us the match. Actually, do I want to go... Do we want to go attack? I'm not exactly sure if we have to, if the foes remaining are equal to the cases solved or if we need to do more. Let's go ahead and just find out. We'll sacrifice soul gaze. That gives us potentially seven clues, though. Dang it all. Um, what about you guys? What do you have? Yeah, we just got straight attack, so we couldn't really do an investigation. If we wanted to, we're going to have to, we'll have to go, go hot and heavy here. So we'll discard soul gaze for five. No target for the talent. Shame. Now, we can, if we want, do three hits to the scorpion. For two fate. Excellent. There's six. Four fate for three hits. If this attack defeats the target foe, collect two. Oh, well, that's handy. Let's go ahead and do that. Alpha result of two. We still, <laughs> we get a little bit. Which is awesome. Michael has no cards and this attack can only be used if it will not defeat the target Ooh. well then I don't think we're gonna have to be it where I think we're just gonna have to force the showdown here guys and I'm not exactly sure how that's gonna work we have two foes remaining and two cases solved so let's sack for Four, five. Oh, that's a shame. But I think we need to kind of get as much as we can. Michael doesn't have anything, so we have to pass. Passing cost one. You still have an unused stunt. You could start the showdown. That's right. Let's go ahead and use the stunt. And that just saves us from having to spend any fate. And now we've got a savage attack. And eight hits. And we have no valid targets, unfortunately, because that would uh, kill both of those guys. So, all we can do here is get full fate. So we have really nothing to do unless other than like force the showdown. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have foes with hits and cases with clues. Um, what we can do here is one fate. This is the thing that's kind of um, eh to me. So if they have hits, zero fate, 
gives us a chance to roll six fate dice. So this is us doing damage to them. Cases with clues doesn't really apply to us. So let's go ahead and showdown. You will not be able to return to the game once the showdown has started. Are you sure you want to proceed? Sure. <laughs> okay. So, fortunately, we have 13 fate to play around with. So let's spend three fate here, and we can inflict two damage and roll five fate die. Add one to Shadow Man. Eh. Curses. Um... Four fate for three. Add two to ritual double murder. And we have a chance here. We have three fate. We can do two automatic attacks and five. So we do have a chance of killing Kalashazak. And I don't think we did it. Curses. Hell's bells. Harry just can't catch a break. Better luck next time. So we have to get more cases than enemies. So it's basically kind of a Hail Mary to take out what you're close to. But still, I think that's a good learning experience, guys. So in the next episode, we will try um, Stormfront again, now that we actually know how to play the game, and uh, go ahead and give it another try. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you liked the episode, please leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, that'd be a big help, and we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.